We've been talking about a trim tab. So we're going to continue on with that. Um, we've been talking about the trim tab required to uh, trim the aircraft, to trim out the hinge moment. And so the last thing we did uh, is we were talking about you set the trim tab and then the elevator floats to a position delta E that comes from no hinge. So in this scenario, we're saying we set this and we're at an angle of attack and we get this elevator. So now we want to say, what trim tab do we need? get the trim elevator. So we're trimmed the aircraft, pitching moment. And so these two come from CL equals the weight divided by Q infinity S and CM equals zero. And so we wanna pitch trim the aircraft Can we set the trim tab to get that value is what we're saying. And so that comes from plugging into this equation, alpha trim and elevator trim. So this equation originally was for any alpha and el any elevator. Uh, well, any alpha and you just stick in whatever trim tab you want and then you find out what elevator you get. Well, now I want to know well, what trim tab do I need to get the elevator that I want? So we take that equation and we substitute in alpha trim and elevator trim. So we're going to get this specific elevator. So that's going to be, a, we'll put trim on there because that's going to be a trim tab needed to give me the elevator that trims the aircraft in pitch. So we just solve this for this value. And that's what you're doing in the current homework. So this is what you need to do the current homework. Once you estimate, you get the values for the coefficients in that equation. So far so good. So that's problem number three in the homework is you're, you're saying, well, what if we trim it, pitch trim it, what trim tab do we need to get that? Because your problem, what problem one and two are doing that. Problem two, you're getting the elevator and the alpha to trim. So you just stick those numbers that you get into this equation and solve for the trim tab. Good? Questions on Zoom? Nope. So in this part here, we solved that two by two trim problem that you're doing for elevator and angle of attack. And that's where we did Kramer's rule to get those equations for alpha trim and elevator trim. In reality, the trim tab, deflecting it, will change the lift slightly. 
and it will change the pitching moment slightly. But if we use those old equations where we didn't have a trim tab, we're neglecting the trim tab effect. So we can add that in. We have to add in another unknown, which is the trim tab into the solution here. And instead of solving these two separately from this one down here, we solve for all three at the same time. So I'm gonna write those equations on the board here as soon as you guys are done writing this down. It's okay to switch. Again, you guys are my guinea pigs. So in, in the previous, we assumed that the trim tab did not affect um, not that did not affect CL and CM, but it does. It's usually a small amount. So what we're doing over there is totally valid. But if we want to be 100% accurate, then we would just solve all three equations at the same time. So we have CL trim, which is what we call NW over Q infinity S. Again, we've been doing level or level flight, so the load factor is usually one. So it's lift equals weight. Right, there was the equation we used for the two by two problem. And now we're gonna say, okay, there may be a small lift effect due to the trim tab, so we'll add that in. Same thing for the pitching moment. I uh, should take the trim off, that CL is equal to, well, never mind. sorry. We're good, leave it alone. Uh, so, and then the pitch trim is CM equals zero. And here's our math model for the pitching moment. And when we set that to zero, that's when we get pitch trim. And there's the equation we use for the two by two solution. But now we're saying, okay, maybe the trim tab changes the pitching moment slightly. So let's add in that effect. So this is the new stuff over here. And so before we had two equations and we had two unknowns, which are alpha and elevator. Now we have three unknowns. So we need another equation, which is what we used on the other board but we just did it independently because we didn't include these effects. So these two equations weren't coupled to the trim tab equation, but now we have to add that third equation in. I'll give you a minute to get caught up. Previously, 
saw it on the screen here. All right, so let's switch over. You guys, I still see a few people riding here. So the easiest way to solve that is to put it into one big matrix. So here's the first equation. And you can see when you start looking at these kind of matrix problems, how our naming convention for the coefficients helps you see whether you've got them in the right spot. There's another name for A, the lift curve slope of the airplane is CL alpha, right? And so you can quickly look and say, okay, yeah, the lift equation is the top one because it's got all the CLs in it. Pitching moment equation is the second one because it's got all the CMs in it. And the trim tab elevator hinge moment coefficient is the bottom one because it's got all the CHEs. And then the subscripts allow you to look and go, okay, this is the alpha unknown. This is the elevator unknown. And this is the trim tab unknown. So the naming helps you see how it all goes together. All right, so we're gonna do an example, go back to our uh, four place airplane, put numbers into both methods of solving this. Uh, method number one is the two by two solution that you're doing in the homework and then sticking in the trim tab equation. And then method two is this full deal here. So from before, we had the information about our flight condition. We were at 5,000 feet. And we had the air density. I don't have it written down here, but we had calculated it. Uh, or we had calculated uh, the dynamic pressure and we had CL alpha which is A of 
Paradian. This is where we calculated CL trim is the weight divided by Q infinity S. And then we had the pitching moment data, CM zero was 0.04, CM alpha minus 0.6136, CM delta E. And in fact, this was the data that we used to solve the two by two trim solution for the airplane. And so from the example we did before, we got an elevator minus 0 0.134 degrees. and a trim angle of attack of 3.98 degrees. So that was earlier. And then if we go into that trim tab equation, I'll write it up here. You guys pull out your calculators and punch away. I'm gonna have to give you some more data, so hang on, but let me write the equation. So that's that just solving that equation we had before for delta E trim. So that's what we're gonna use. And then you need the trim tab data to go in here. So I need to give you that for this airplane. So let me make room up here. We don't need the velocity anymore or the altitude because that all went into C L trim. So it turns out the effect of the trim tab on lift is negligible, so that's zero. What else do we need? We need CM delta T. We're not gonna need that for this, but I'm gonna just complete the data up here. That's the stuff that we're gonna need over here. And then what we need for this is CHE zero is zero, CHE alpha is minus 0.6, CHE delta E is minus 0.95, CHE delta T is minus 0.688, these are all per radian. And you go, wow, did those just magically appear? No, that's what you get from the appendix and that's part of what you're doing in homework number three is getting the B1, B2, B0, B1, B2, B3 that then go into the equations that then give you this stuff. All right, so let's calculate this. Go ahead and you just work this, plug numbers in and see what kind of trim tab value we get.
what is it asking about? CAG minus 0.6. Yeah, somebody can't read this. This is minus 0.688. And after we do the two by two plugged into this, then we're going to do the full three by three problem. Anybody brave enough to give us an answer for this? What you got? Minus 0 0.0573. And what are the units? Right, because all this stuff is per radian, so we should get radians out of it, right? And then what's that in degrees? By the way, you had to convert this to radians, right? So always track the units through. What is that per degree? Or sorry, in degrees? Negative 3.286. Did I get that right? And in fact, the two by two trim solution comes from, let's see, do I have room? We need those numbers, but I can erase down here, right? The equation. So this is delta T trim. So as a reminder, that two by two trim solution that we use to get elevator and angle of attack is just CL alpha, CL delta E, CM alpha, CM delta E. And this is uh, minus CL trim, minus Oh, it's plus, sorry. So that's what we did to get the two by two solution is that. So this is the equation or those, once this is solved, that's what we use to get these values here. The homework number two, you'll be doing that solution. You can use the one that's already, we've already calculated alpha trim equals and delta E trim equals, and then you'll calculate the trim tab like that. Okay, so let's go over and fill in the matrix for the three by three. Let's see, looks like somebody on Zoom got the same number. You guys all got the same number here or figured out where you punch numbers wrong. So now we just take numbers and stick them in to the matrix. So CL alpha is 4.42, CL delta E 0.43, and then CL trim tab is zero, CM alpha, so that value, by the way, is the airplane stable? CM alpha is negative. Yeah, easy. And once we've calculated CM alpha or we know the neutral point and the CG location, both. And then the right-hand side, this is CL alpha. This is CM zero, and that's CM, um, oh, that's CHE zero. Now, heads up, this is not for the homework, unless you just want to do it. We're, we're going to stop with what we did on the other board for the homework. 
with the two by two plus the decoupled trim tab equation. I guess I shouldn't say not for homework. I'd say it's optional. If you're sitting at home and you've gotten all the way to the end of your favorite Netflix series and you don't have anything to do, then you can do this, right? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to look at the at the answers we actually get for that problem. Yeah. And it's going to be slightly more accurate because we're including the pitching moment in the of the trim tab. Now, do you guys have calculators that can do this? Everybody? Not everybody. Um, I tend to do, if I'm in my office, I use MATLAB. You guys have used MATLAB to solve matrices before, right? So let's pop up MATLAB here and just type in that matrix. Let's share the screen. There it is. No, there it isn't. Thank you. My eyes are not working. Okay, so let's get the chat minimized. So we want to put that matrix into MATLAB. I'm going to call my matrix AA. square bracket to open up and we type in you can use commas or spaces I like to use spaces so there's the first row and then you hit enter and we type in the second row you guys check me look over my shoulder or look at the screen actually and make sure that I'm typing in the numbers right Hit the wrong button there. Minus 1.122, minus 0.187. Did I get those right? Somebody nod their head. Good. That look good? All right. It'll echo it back. We can compare it. Matches. Check. Now we'll do the right-hand side. There's the right-hand side. I've already done that. And we'll solve for the solution. XX equals and I do this because I know how to remember the command for inverse. And that's really what you do is you multiply both sides by the inverse of the matrix to solve, right? And those values are in radians. Let's get it in degrees. How well do we match? The first one's the angle of attack. 3.98 with the two by two solution. Here we got 3.91. So it's a little bit of difference. How about the elevator, 0.6136? That changed, did I get that right? Yeah, so that changed quite a bit because the trim tab being deflected the other direction actually reduces the elevator effectiveness. So we needed a little more elevator. And then how about the trim tab value? We needed a little bit more trim tab because the elevator changed. Still pretty close. I mean, the, the two by two is a good estimate. The three by three gives you a better result. And the other way you can solve this, and this is what I always have to remember, 
um, is you can actually do BB, and I think it's forward slash. You guys know this off the top of your head? Or is it backslash? You done this before? Nope, that's not right. It must be forward slash. Like I said, the reason I use the inverse, maybe it's the other, I think it's the order is backwards that always gets me. Yep. And that's what, it always messes me up because I think you should be dividing BB by AA, right? That's just, uh, uh, this tells it to do Gaussian elimination solving rather than do inverse of the matrix. But you guys all know this, right? You've done this before in 227. Yes, so you guys all know everything in MATLAB, right? That you've used before, I mean, matrix solving and all that. Yeah. It'll tell you. Yeah, so let's make one, like. Um, If the determinant is zero, you know it won't have an inverse, right? And this one's definitely got a problem. So if we do the solution. Oh, I called it triple A, right? It says that I can't do this. And if you try to invert it, it'll do the same thing. All right, so we've talking about we've talked about trim tab helps alleviate stick force to the pilot when he's trying to fly the airplane. So how do we actually calculate stick force? So we need to know how the elevator is connected up via the hinge to the stick. So there's a mechanical linkage. So we're gonna write the equation for that. So here's the stick in the cockpit. And it's connected through what's called a linkage. And G is, I'm gonna define these in a minute. G is the gearing and GS is the linkage. So inside that box is the connection, the mechanical connection to the elevator. And we can put a little tab on it as well. So imagine there being some kind of bar here that that linkage attacks to and you pull and push on that and it moves the elevator and you pull and push on the stick and it moves the linkage that moves the elevator. So here we've got positive hinge moment in this direction and positive elevators trailing edge down. And so those are mapped via the linkage to a stick force and a stick deflection. And it's determined by the gearing inside here. Now the way I've got it drawn, it kind of looks like, well, you move the stick and it's gonna pull on this wire right and it's gonna pull the elevator down and that's actually backward. Because you pull on the stick and the trailing edge goes up to pitch the airplane up. But that's what's inside this box is the gearing on which way this thing moves and it gears it to moving that thing there. So I had deliberately drew it this way 
so that a positive stick deflection here was geared to a positive elevator because we're going to write that equation. Let's define this here. So P is the pilot applied force. S is the stick deflection. We already know HE, but let's write it up here anyway. This is the elevator hinge moment. Delta E, of course, is the elevator deflection. GS is the stick to elevator gearing. And in fact, the way I've drawn this, this would have to be a negative gearing in here so that the positive stick leads to a negative elevator because that's the way it's usually geared up. And G is the total linkage gearing including power boost, essentially power steering. Because airplanes like cars can have a hydraulic boost system to give more stick force to large elevator surfaces than what the pilot can actually provide by the stick length and moment arm. And the connection between the hip moment and P is G, and the connection between the elevator and stick movement is GS. So let's write the equation for stick force in terms of that. So really new here is this G times HE. So this is how you calculate stick force. And obviously you need to know the gearing. I mean, what kind of mechanical advantage does the stick have in moving? And as with everything else, we're gonna do this in terms of coefficients. So we're gonna do the hinge moment coefficient here. So we're gonna use the definition there. The hinge moment times uh, one half rho V squared. And then we used C bar in the elevator here. Let me draw a line down through here. That was the definition of the hinge moment coefficient is HE over Q infinity times this distance here. Oh, I forget the area as well. So put in SE here. We have to use, have an area in there for non-dimensional. So stick that in up there. So I'm out of room here. Let me run over, switch over to the other board. How are we doing on time? So let me rewrite that equation. And then CHE, we have our model for that.
right? So the reason I rewrote that up there, let's say we're flying along at an angle of attack of five degrees and the elevator is deflected like three degrees and the trim, tab, trim tabs deflected one degree. So that gives a certain, certain hinge moment, right? Or a hinge moment coefficient and then that goes up here. This is an area, it just stays the same. This is this, we're at the same altitude. But what if we're flying at different velocities? We could do that, right? Airplanes flying at two different airspeeds. So let's say we have a velocity of 100 feet per second, and then another one where we're flying at 200 feet per second. Does the stick force experienced by the pilot change? Same angle attack, same elevator, although angle attack might change because we're flying faster, but you see how it's gonna change, right? And so, in fact, we're gonna have four times the stick force because it's squared than we do uh, at the lower velocity. So what do you think about this? It's a multiple choice question. A, this is good. B, this is bad. C, it's Monday morning, I really just don't care. Uh, more relevantly, it, it's, it doesn't matter. So what do you think? So I, I get one vote for B, other people vote for B. They have quite a few votes for B. I can't see the Zoom people. Oh, I see a bunch coming in, A's and B's. Let me get my chat back up. You what? Yeah, yeah, I mean, there could be hydraulic boost in here. We're just talking about, yeah, if it changes with velocity. So I see a bunch of Bs, 1A coming in from Zoom. Nobody voted for C? It is Monday, isn't it? <laughs> and you're like, Let's just get this lecture over with. I really don't care right now. When I have to know for the quiz, then I'll care, right? Now, I understand. I get that. It's like, my wife says the grass is getting tall in the front yard, and it's like, right now, I really just don't care. <laughs> I'll mow it next weekend, yeah. Okay, so the faster you go, the more stick force. So... If we decide this is bad, it means that we need to alleviate that st stick force the faster we go, right? Sounds reasonable. Except this says if the pilot pulls on the stick and he's going faster, he's going to have to work harder to cause the airplane to change direction. So let's think about that for a minute. And in fact, let's jump vehicles. You're in your car and you're driving slowly, trying to turn into your driveway, how much force do you put on the wheel to do that turn? Not a whole lot, right? It's pretty easy to turn over, even parking. You're going real slow, crank the wheel over to get into that parking spot close to the door at Target. How about when you're on the interstate, driving 75 miles an hour, because we're all doing the speed limit, right? The turnpike. Does it take more stick force, more wheel force to do a turn when you're going fast? It, it does. If you tried to do that sharp 90 degree turn into a parking space going 75 miles an hour, you'd have to really push on the wheel. And in fact, you'd probably spin out, right? You'd skid because the tires don't have enough friction to do that sharp turn. Well, it turns out that this is actually good because it gives the pilot speed feedback. And it makes it hard for him to do rapid maneuvers that would break the airplane. Just like in the car, you want that wheel force to be high when you're fi driving fast on the interstate so that you get a sense of, well, if I turn too sharply, I will skid and probably spin out on the road. The same deal here, you want that speed feedback. Sometimes this is called Q feel because it comes in through the dynamic pressure 
one half rho v squared. And it's just an artifact of the fact that if you're flying faster, there's more dynamic pressure pushing on the elevator. And so if you try to deflect the elevator, there's more force on it that keeps you from deflecting it. But it turns out to, to a, 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 a good extent, this is a good thing because it gives that pilot the speed feedback and keeps him from overstressing the airplane. Um, and this is the reason that you have uh, variable power assist, because that's what actually gives you that in the car. Steering. And if we build an airplane that doesn't have a mechanical linkage, it's all hydraulics or fly by wire or fly by light, you don't get this because the hydraulics handles the force or the servos handle it. And so actually you need to add this in So you need some kind of mechanism in there that either, you know, if it's fly by wire, then it usually goes through a computer and the computer will artificially generate this force in the stick for you. And that is why power steering on most cars has rack and pinion variable power rather than just pure hydraulic power steering. In other words, they did experiment with the wheel would change the flow of hydraulic fluid in it from a hydraulic pump, and it would just hydraulically activate the steering in cars, and that lost the feel of the road through the mechanical linkage and also some of this. And so they've switched to power assist rather than just pure power steering in cars. And so the rack and pinion, of course, is a better, from what I understand, is a much better linkage to the car, to the tires. But you get the power assist that helps you uh, do parking and all that. Uh, at low speeds, it kicks up the boost, but then at high speeds, it pulls out the power assist to keep you from overstressing your car. All right, so we're done for today. Next time we'll do a pull-up, which is a maneuver. And there, how the stick force changes with G's load factor when we're doing the pull-up is really important because that also helps the, air, the pilot not stress the airplane and break the wings. Somebody's asking, yeah, that's controls. I put add Q feel for not, to, oh, sorry, add Q feel to non-mechanical controls. See you guys on Wednesday.